giving kickback funds to friends, hiring contractors who contributed to your campaigns, throwing elaborate parties for lobbyists who may have enemy tendencies, lobster tails and a T-bone or filet can go a long way when you're trying to keep the pressure off or swoon someone into liking you. Is it unethical to hire, kick back, and lobby for your own interests with taxpayers' money? The Illinois Senate overrides the governor on Gerard McClendon Live. Welcome to Gerard McClendon Live. Is it mysterious when you're a public official and your friends start winning bids on contracts? Sure, they completed the RFPs with down-to-the-letter accuracy, but what if the bid was astronomical and others unrelated to you could do the job much better and much cheaper? I'm mad today because nepotism, cronyism, and kickbacks dominate Chicago politics. But the Senate arrested Blagojevich by voting 55 to 0 on restricting campaign donations. Call me now, Chicago, 630-575-TALK is the number, 630-575-TALK. Join the conversation. You know what? Phone lines are open right now. I want to hear what you have to say about Rod Blagojevich's veto basically falling on deaf ears. I'm going straight to the Associated Press. I want to read this to you in case you didn't see this on the news or read this in the, in, in the, uh, on chicagotribune.com. AP states that the Illinois Senate has given final approval to new restrictions on campaign donations by government contractors. The 55 to 0 vote Monday means the restrictions now become law despite a veto by Governor Rod Blagojevich. The measure is meant to fight the state's reputation for pay-to-play politics, the idea that only campaign donors get a chance to win government business. Now someone with a state contract worth $50,000 or more will be barred from donating to the official who awarded the contract. The AP goes on to say lawmakers approved it this spring, but the governor used his vote, his veto powers to make sweeping changes that were widely seen as unrealistic. See, look, here's the deal. Rod Blagojevich doesn't get everything that he wants to have. We have to realize this. The citizens have power, and today the Senate has spoken. I'm going to go to my blog today. You can always hit my blog at cltv.com slash gml. I mentioned this. Blago's veto gets KO'd. 55 to 0, the Senate has spoken. We may now see restrictions on campaign donations. Senate and citizens win. Blagojevich and the dark-haired side lose. Post your thoughts on cleaning up corrupt corruption on my blog, cltv.com slash gml. Give me a call right now. What do you think about this? 630-575-TALK, 630-575-TALK. You know, I don't really have that big of a beef with Rob Blagojevich. I think for the most part, he does a decent job. But when it comes to pay to play, come on, he's guilty. You know it, Chicago. He's guilty. I'm going crazy today throwing this paper at you. I want to look at a blog comment from, a, uh, Chicago, from the Chicago Tribune, if we can post that. There's a blog comment from the Chicago Tribune. I really believe that if Blago was given the same type of mental testing that's given by psychiatrists to those charged with crimes to determine if they are sane, we would find out that we have a seriously mentally ill governor. He just doesn't seem to grasp reality. That's Gary writing his blog comment on chicagotribune.com. Gary, thanks a lot for that. And finally, I want to get to this before we have to go to break. It looks like John McCain finally has grown some teeth, and the teeth are getting much sharper. We saw that the Sarah Palin, uh, you know, uh, stealth mission from Alaska put a lot of fire and momentum into the McCain-Palin campaign, but I'm telling you, I want to go to the latest McCain commercial, but first I want to lay this thing out for you. The McCain commercial says that 
Barack Obama was born of the corrupt Chicago political machine. He talks about Daly, Daly's brother in the article, being a lobbyist, Tony Resco being a felon, Emil Jones being under some sort of ethical, mysterious cloud, and Governor Blagojevich state and federal investigations. If we can cut to that clip, I would greatly appreciate uh, the Barack Obama. Barack Obama, born of the corrupt Chicago political machine. In terms of my toughness, look, first of all, I come from Chicago. His economic advisor, William Daly, lobbyist, mayor's brother. His money man, Tony Resco, client, patron, convicted felon. His political godfather, Emil Jones, under ethical cloud. His governor, Rod Blagojevich, a legacy of federal and state investigations. With friends like that, Obama is not ready to lead. I'm John McCain, and I approve this message. Oh, you know, John McCain approved the message. I'm telling you, this is a great commercial. I don't care if you're a McCain supporter or an Obama supporter. The commercial is really good. See, here's the deal. When you run for an office, especially the higher up you go, you got to be very careful with who you hang out with. I mean, and the McCain campaign, I think, has scored a winner with this commercial. They're citing Resco, Daly, Jones, and Blagojevich. And if you notice, in the commercial, it's well produced. They've got these silhouette shadow images of these gentlemen. They're saying at the end that Obama's not ready to lead. And what's sad is when you attach Barack Obama to Rod Blagojevich, that means trouble. It really does. The one thing that I don't like about Rod Blagojevich is that when reporters get around him, he runs for his life. He'll always kind of leave the reporters, try to come up with an answer, and then come back to the reporters. And very seldom does he answer the question. It frustrates me to no end. I also wrote here, does Obama need an ethics check as well? Now, it's plain. Harvard trained, you know, constitutional lawyer, uh, professor at the University of Chicago. But he really should have been watching closely who he was hanging out in the past. But when you look at his rise to the top, those gentlemen mentioned in the McCain ad may have something to do with the rise of Barack Obama. 630-575-TALK is the number. 630-575-TALK. We're taking your phone calls tonight on Gerard McClendon Live. I'm opening up phone lines to see where you stand on politicians making sure family and friends are hooked up before the taxpaying public. 630-575-TALK. I'm giving you the microphone tonight. Don't be shy. I won't bite you. Gerard McClendon Live. You got two minutes to call me. We'll see you in a moment. It's the Republicans who've dragged him into this issue. They're the ones who called on him to uh, call on, on uh, Senate President Jones to act on, on the ethics bill. And as you know, Senator President Jones is like a, fa a father in many ways to, to Barack, loves him deeply and cares about him. And it's very touching and, and, uh, and very genuine. And so what I'm fearful of is that this is a Republican trap. They're setting Barack Obama up by using this ethics issue in Illinois. <laughs> Welcome back to Gerard McClendon Live. Call me and let's have a conversation about ethics. 630-575-TALK is my number. Give your thoughts. Give me a call. You know, first of all, Rod Blagojevich's comments were interesting. It's like a force field is up around this guy. He's deflecting stuff. I mean, somewhat, it's like a Jedi war tactic. What's going on here? He brings the Republican Party into the issue to deflect attention away from himself. I'm going to the phones. Calvin, thank you for calling Gerard McClendon live. Calvin, talk to me. Hey, I'll tell you something, buddy. This is the reason why you have so much backroom politics, not only in county, state, and federal government. That's why nothing can get done as far as the schools are concerned, as far as state and city. I mean, there's a whole lot of cronyism, a bunch of lying going on. You know, Gerard, there was a story told me one time. It's like this. It says, it's easy to grin when your ship come in and you think you got the stock market beat. But the man worthwhile is the man who can smile when his shorts get too tight in the seat. You must separate 
protect yourself from cronyism and falsehood and lies. Thanks for taking my call, buddy. Oh, man, Calvin, thanks for calling Gerard McClendon Live. You know Calvin always lights it up on the show. One of my favorite callers. It's all good. 630-575-TALK. This is the true First Amendment talk show. It's all about freedom of speech. I'm going to the phones. Ray, thank you for calling Gerard McClendon Live. Talk to me, Ray. How you doing, Gerard? Excellent. Well, you know, I'm looking at the fact that I don't think this really is going to change much. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm looking at Illinois as probably the most corrupt state <laughs> in the United States, <laughs> you know. And nobody does it better except the politicians in the White House. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you think that Barack Obama has benefited from some of these corrupt politicians? Um, I would say yes, he has, and the commercial that John McCain did or the ad he did was uh, was correct. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. You know, you know what's sad though is I'm trying to figure out Ray, and you got to help me out on this, man. Can you be an honest politician and get elected? What do you think? I think um, it's kind of like you sell a little bit of your soul to the devil mm. to participate in this game. You know, to be a winner, you have to sell a little bit of yourself. Wow. Ray, thanks for the call, man. I'm going to run with that. 630-575-TALK is the number. 630-575-TALK. Calvin is, is lighting it up. Ray is lighting it up. Ray says you got to sell your soul to be a politician just to get elected. I'm going to Kelly. Gerard McClendon live. Kelly, what's your comment? Well, politics have been the same for years. There's nothing's going to change. You have to pay to play, and really the only way to change the game is to get in it. Mm. Okay, so Kelly, hold, stay with me. Stay with me, Kelly. So if you want to change the game, whether you have dirt or skeletons in your closet or not, you still have to get in? That's right. You got to get in the game to play the game to change the game. Kelly. Thanks for the call. I appreciate that. Thanks for calling and watching Gerard McClendon Live. You know what? The callers are lighting up the phones tonight. You can call me. This is your First Amendment television show. show. 630-575-TALK is the number. Governor Blagojevich stalling on ethics bill, waiting for a convenient time to knock patronage. Call me, Governor. Call me, Chicago. 630-575-TALK. Gerard McClendon Live continues in a moment. Welcome back. Gerard McClendon Live is the television show that you're watching right now here on CLTV. 630-575-TALK is the number. 630-575-TALK. What are your thoughts on ethics in politics? This is your chance to voice your views. I'm going right back to the telephones. Richard, thanks for calling Gerard McClendon Live. Richard, what's your comment? Um, first of all, I just want to say that... Uh I, I, I really enjoy watching your show. Thank you. And, uh, you know, you have some great uh, topics of discussion on your show. I appreciate that. Now, regarding this issue you have up here tonight, now, everybody knows that this move, the first move that McCain made with Palin was a desperation move. It's a card game. He's playing his hand. Mm. Okay, and so now he, put, he comes up with this uh, commercial, okay, this is a, a commercial of desperation. Everybody knows hmm. that Barack Obama has run a clean campaign, hmm. and people gravitate to him because of who he is. Hmm. Okay, hundreds of thousands of people, you know, have yeah. touched base with this man over the last 18 months. So, you know, out of that number, he's going to run into some thugs and some Chicago-type folks, this gang, down-low gangsters, you know, everybody knows that. But oh, yeah. At the same time, he has enough finesse and grace uh, to, you know, surpass all of the uh, Father Flager comments and the Jeremiah White, all the stuff he went through, hmm. the Hillary Clinton, everything he went through to get to where he is now. He's close enough to get to this uh, goal that he's trying to reach. So the American people have to be intelligent enough to know that this is just a scheme to throw dirt on him, but he's going to rise above it. Cream always rise to the top, and, and he's, going to, uh, he's going to make it into the White House. That's wow. my belief. Wow, Richard, you are the man. Thanks for being an avid watcher of Gerard McClendon Live. We appreciate you. Hey, have a good night now. Wow, I'm going to Al. Al, thanks for calling Gerard McClendon Live. Al, what's your comment? Yeah, man, I just wanted to know, man, like, seriously, he went to Harvard. So 
Let's see, Barack Obama, Harvard. How do we know he wasn't inducted into Skulls and Bones Society, which is the actual society which keeps this government going? The pyramidal system of politics mm -hmm. is based on the same domino effect, so he's playing Illinois politics. Mm. The CIA used was invented because they wanted to see what was going on down south about blacks being hung and what and whatnot. So yeah. they sent the CIA to investigate and so, actually committed some of those crimes that so, come to so, light. So, so now Al, Barack Obama is our version of the CIA, so the Al, Illinois Al, version. So Al, do you think that that politicians are pretty much pawns in the game? They're, they're, the thing is, it's rigged. It's a rigged system. Oh, and everybody has their turn. It's this man's turn. And that's why he's being backed by Daly and all the most corrupt in Illinois. Wow. It's his turn. Al, do you think that he'll be different than any other president or pretty much the same? Uh, no. No, the Illuminati won't have it any other way. Oh, the Illuminati. We've taken it to the obelisk. We've taken it to ancient Egypt. Al, thanks for the call, man. I appreciate you. Woo, it's getting hot tonight on Gerard McClendon Live. I'm going to Tony. Talk to me, Tony. What's your comment? Hi there. Um, Hi. I'm actually appalled only because um, I look at how McCain has done nothing but slung mud at Barack Obama and 13 cars and nine homes mm. and seven, seven lobbyists on his, um, you know, political team. Mm. I mean, we're going back to the old slave master days where yeah. we're going against the grain of our own people. I think Barack has made great strides in trying to show oh, that he's making on. a change. On, no, it's on. not a come on issue now, Gerard. Come on, let's be serious here, no, okay? I'm trying, no, I'm trying to agree with you. Let's so, be I mean, you pulled out the slave word. Let me ask you this, though. Uh, Sarah Palin, is she qualified? I, if I wish I could say the word, but it's H-E double hockey sticks, okay? Oh. No. <laughs> no. Oh, man, you can't see her being president of the United States. I can't see her being my friend's, my child's principal, okay, at her public school. I, could, I can't see her doing any more than what she's done, and that's to come out swinging and, and being facetious towards a man who she hardly knows. Yeah. And we need to give Barack Obama the benefit, as we have given every other president who has failed us, Okay, we, yeah. I expect great things from Barack Obama, and I wow. think as a black woman living in Naperville, where I'm surrounded by Republicans, and I'm faced with a lot of racism and a lot of things that we are not privy to, I think that as a black woman, we ought to give him the benefit to show what we are made of, the okay. substance that we are made of. Hey, that's valid, Tony. Thanks for calling. Gerard McClendon Live, CLTV.com slash GML is the blog. Hit me, and still to come... My interview with Chicago Hallmark Ron Rappaport. We'll be back in two minutes. Hello and welcome back to Gerard McClendon Live. In town for their book signing, we spoke with Tim Reed and Tom Dreesen, and we also had the opportunity to get a few words with columnist, commentator, and the co-writer of Tim and Tom, Ron Rappaport. Hey, take a look. This had to be a fascinating book to write with Tim Reed and Tom Dreesen. It was great fun. It was just great fun. It was so much fun that I started telling people that they were paying me off on laughs until Tom said, if I, you say that too much more often, your check is going to say, ha-ha, cash this. <laughs> you know, These guys were just a ball to be with. It was professionally and personally, this book was just a riot. i got to tell you, Gerard, I've been a writer for a long time, and I realized that this is why we become writers against the day that sometime you're going to get material as strong as, and as involving and as funny and as fascinating and as important as I think is contained in Tim and Tom. You know, what makes Ron Rappaport sit down and say, this is a compelling enough story to do? Well, I knew Tom uh, when at the time I worked in Chicago, and of course, he's from the Chicago area, and he's here all the time. And at one point, he approached me and he said, you know, I was part of the first black and white comedy team, and I had two reactions. The first was, what? You were what? He said, yeah, I was Tim Reed. Remember WKRP? You were what? And then the, my second reaction was, why don't I know this? Why don't I know that this happened? And he said, well, that's the point. So he started telling me some stories about what was going on, and I was just blown away. It was amazing. Later, I met Tim. And Tim started telling me some stories, and I have to tell you, when I heard Tom's stories, I said, boy, Tim's are going to have to go some to catch up to that. Then I started hearing Tim's stories, and they were just as good, if not better. These two guys lived amazing American lives before they were Tim and Tom, while they were Tim and Tom, and after they were Tim and Tom. And I realized that my responsibility was to try to capture the excitement 
and the fun, but also the danger and the pain of what they went through. And we had some amazing times together. Gerard, if I could play you the tapes mm. of, that I have of us talking, and I talked to them individually, and I talked to us all together, the three of us together. There were times we were laughing so hard. Mm. I had to say, guys, stop. Some poor woman has to type these transcripts up, and our voices, you're not, she's not going to be able to pick us out because we're laughing. And there were times when it got very, very quiet. Yeah. There were times when Tom got up and walked away from the mic because of the emotion mm. of trying to recapture an era, a, a time, and some events and some incidents that they buried. These are two successful guys. Mm. They're celebrating their 40th year in show business next year. They both had great careers, exciting, fun, not just, not just financially, but they've had really rewarding careers in many ways. And here they were digging up the pain of their childhoods and the pain of the rejection and the, and the violence that they had to confront while they were a team. They had, they had buried that. But once they got into it, they really dug it up. And it was really an emotional experience for them and for me. Check out the full unedited version of that interview on CLTV.com slash GML. Thanks to Tim Reed, Tom Dreesen, and Ron Rappaport. And thanks to you for watching Gerard McClendon Live this evening. Wayne Dyer said, give love and unconditional acceptance to those you encounter and take notice to what happens. Keep your head up and always be encouraged. Axe or ask, Donda's rules suit shoes.